You know, at the end of the day, success really is about waking up with a smile on your face, knowing you're gonna have a fun day, right? You're really looking forward to what you're doing. Mark Cuban, entrepreneur, billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks, and avid investor on the show, Shark Tank. He has also written one of my favorite books of all time, How to Win at the Sport of Business. All in all, he knows a little thing or two about money, investing, and entrepreneurship. So anyways, let's get started off with his thoughts on investing and the stock market. See, that's the whole thing. I don't have to spend much time until until it hits the fan. So I don't, I mean, and a I lot of hitting the fan. This well, week. well, that's exactly right. <laughs> and that's where the opportunity is. Like, I wouldn't look at my portfolio or, you know, I get I get a, you know, a one line, um, one number statement every day from my bank. And, you know, that tells me if anything weird happened and I wouldn't even look at it. But then when everything starts getting crazy, I call it the World Series of Investing. You know, that's when you start digging in. And it's because of the approach that I take, you know, back in 2006 and 2006. Seven, I was writing blogs saying, look, the stock market's for suckers. You're getting put, you know, when you sit down at the business table, you always look for the sucker. And if you don't see it, it's you. And the challenge today is because of low interest rates and other reasons, people don't trust the stock market. Even if, you know, whatever you make, if you save your money, it doesn't do you all that much good. Right. You know, you definitely not, not at 1%. Right yeah, now. well, exactly right. And, you know, most people don't trust the stock markets and I don't blame them, yeah. you know. So where are you going to put your money other than just in the bank saving for a rainy day? Right now, let's just say you're making um, $35,000 a year mm -hmm. and you're clearing 1500 bucks a month after taxes. Okay. And you live like a student. I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, whatever. Sure. You're living like a student and you're able to save 500 bucks a month. So you're saving six grand a year, 500 bucks a month, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's what every Republican wants you to do. That's what every Democrat wants you to do. Try to control your own destiny. Now you put it in the bank or do you put it in stocks? No one trusts the stock market. No one really knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? No, you put it into a fund. But the problem is if you put it into a fund, because you're not making a lot of money if the dishwasher breaks, right? You get penalized for taking sure. that money out. So we're, we're in a situation right now where if you put that money into the bank, which is really only the safe way, you know, 6,000 a year, in a year you'll have $6,060, right? Sure. You're just not ever gonna be- If that. If that, right? And the point being is you're never going to improve your place in life. So yes, Mark Cuban thinks that the stock market is for suckers. And I agree with him on one of the points in the sense that you shouldn't be investing in the stock market in hopes of getting rich or in hopes of improving your life in some sort of dramatic way. If you're only making, you know, $500 a month and you want to invest that in the stock market, odds are you will have a better return investing that in yourself or in your career or learning how to sell or starting a business. I always recommend that to people. The highest return on investment you will ever have in your life is not in the stock market. It's not even through real estate. It's for investing in yourself and investing in a business. That is how you get the highest return on investment because the stock market won't make too much of a difference in your life. What the stock market is for is for investing that extra money that you do not need and don't know what to do with. Maybe you don't want to start a business and you have some extra money. That is what the stock market is for. So anyways, next on the list is what are Mark Cuban's thoughts on learning? Books. Uh -huh. What's your opinion? How important are they? Oh, very important. If you're not curious, if you're not always learning, you're falling behind. You have to read, you have to learn. Yeah, I mean, I, I read as much as I can hours, literally. If I'm not reading a couple hours a day, there's some little kid out there trying to kick my ass, but it's not gonna happen. Ten, so I I'm got out, but yeah, I mean, you're, talk, you're thinking no, about I, this. I, what I try to teach them is that, you know, you've gotta A, learn how to learn. To me, the most important part of college is, you know, are you learning how to learn? Because le learning is a lifetime achievement. You know, it's something you've got to continuously do. You heard it there from Mark Cuban. Learning is a lifelong endeavor. And if you are not learning, if you are not reading, then you are falling behind. Learning is something that should happen for the rest of your life. It's not something that just stops right after high school, right after college, right after university. It should happen forever. If you do not keep learning, if you do not keep reading books, if you do not keep listening to audiobooks or listening to podcasts or researching articles, reading articles, then you are falling behind in business and in life. Learning is one of the most important tools that any entrepreneur has, and you need to keep sharpening that tool for your entire life. Anyways, the next thing that Mark Cuban is gonna talk about is debt and credit cards. The best way to get a return, let's just say you have $50,000 in cash. It could be 10, it could be 100. But, you know, let's use 50. First thing I would do is pay off all your credit cards, because that's costing you 18%. That's what John and Sally should do first. Most don't, right? There's more credit card and student loan debt um, relative to personal income than there's ever been in 
the history of the United States. Cut up your credit cards. If you use a credit card, you don't, don't want to be rich. rich. Yep, I like that line. line. That's a good line. That's my favorite line. I tell it people all the time. If you use your credit cards, you do not want to be rich. And people then uh, they ask me, well, where's the best place to invest? I said, your best place to invest is to pay off all your credit cards and burn them. Because your credit card, you know what your return is, right? If you get off, you know, you're paying 15, 20% interest in one way or the other. And if, if you pay that down, you just earn 15 or 20%. First thing you do is pay off your credit cards. Okay. Right? You always, because if you're paying 15, 17, 19%, yeah. that's a guaranteed return. Yeah. Right? That's a guaranteed return. Yeah. Right? You're not going to get that much somewhere else. Well, I guess that's why in the show Shark Tank, he always hates companies that have tons and tons of debt. Well, I guess it, it, it just kind of makes sense now. So anyways, even though I kind of disagree with him in the sense of having credit cards is terrible for you, I think it's really bad for you only if you are bad with money and you get behind on the payments. And I think when he talks about credit cards, he just assumes you are bad with money and assumes that you got behind on them. So anyways, I, uh, I agree with him in the sense that you should be paying those off first if you do have any sort of debt with credit cards however if you use credit cards and you pay them off on time and you have no cumulative debt then they are completely okay in fact they could be good for you that you can take out more debt you get a better credit score which could help you with some investments like in real estate and, and things like that so anyways the next thing he is going to talk about is being a good saver and being a good shopper you want to save you know six months worth of income for a rainy day yeah you want to be a smart shopper believe it or not the best return if you're making 25 50 75 thousand dollars a year and i realize that's a wide range but the best return you're going to get on your money is being a smart shopper yeah. all the things that you buy all the time that you're going to use over you i mean look i get on amazon on amazon i buy a year's worth of toothpaste toothpaste huh. i buy a year's worth of razor blades i buy a year just because i like to prove a point right right i get my 50 percent off so you that's haven't better, locked even though you're a billionaire you haven't lost touch with reality oh no hell right? no i can tell you yeah yeah you don't want to is you use the transactional value of cash a lot of people say you know you're losing money to inflation when you just have cash in the bank completely disagree I can you know I know I'm gonna be buying a bunch of toothpaste for my family I know toilet paper I know all the consumables that I have I can take my cash and go get a better value I can take my cash and go buy store services. up yeah yeah, why not? I mean, how much space does toothpaste take, you know, but you're going to spend. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. The time it takes just to figure out your budget, yeah. which nobody does. The time yeah. it takes just to analyze your spending habits, you can get a better return and you'll end up with more cash. One of the top reasons why people are poor or just don't have enough money, it's not because that they aren't making enough income. It's largely because they are spending way too much money when they don't need to be spending money. So whether it's going out to Starbucks every single day, getting that $7 coffee, and then going out and getting a, a nice lunch somewhere, and then getting takeout dinner, or whether it's just buying that extra pair of shoes or that extra shirt, whatever it may be, just being smarter with spending your money, being smarter with your expenses in general, having a budget, that is one of the top things that you can do in order to be financially free. So anyways, the next thing that Mark is gonna talk about here is starting a business, what it's like to start a business, and putting in a lot of hard work. That the American dream has become a nightmare and that uh, the corporations have squeezed all of the juice out of the economy right. and the little man can't get ahead. Yeah. And it's it's never said that way. It's always said with a whine. The little man can't <laughs> get ahead. Well, you, you know, know, we know that's wrong. I mean, that's the beauty of Shark Tank, right? That's why I love to do the show because it sends the message that the American dream is alive and well. And all you have to do is look at Susan from Iowa and Johnny from, you know, Pittsburgh that are coming in here with ideas that they started in their kitchen or their bedroom that they turned into companies and they have the courage to come out here and try to compete with us for for an investment but even if they don't get an investment they know that they have what it takes to go out there and succeed there are they are everyday proof that the american dream is alive and well pretty is that a it's the best time to start a business when you know when you're a college kid high school kid right out of school what have you got to lose you right. know when i started as i say in there when i started my first company i had just gotten fired I was sleeping six guys in a three bedroom apartment, sleeping on the floor. I mean, what did I have to lose? So after I got fired to be able to go out and start a company, it was easy, there was no downside. And so, you know, before you have bills, before you have credit card debt, that's the time to do it. You know, it, it's funny because there are so many things going on in the economy right now. We have the shared economy, which I don't think people take into account, right? You can start funding yourself and start a business by, you know, renting out your couch on couchsurf.com, right? By renting out a room on Airbnb and use that to raise money. And then, you know, going out there and to start a technology business, all you need is a broadband account, a phone, 
some time and, and effort and maybe a laptop if you really want to get fancy. And you can start any technology business that you want. You know, there, there are very few businesses that you can't start with no money, next to no money if you have sweat equity. Sweat equity is the best capital you could ever have and you have an unlimited supply. And I say this to, I say this to our, the Mavericks basketball players and I say it to everybody in business, the one thing in life that you can control is your effort. And if you're willing to put in an effort to start the business and you're willing to deal with the challenges and the fact that you, know, you might starve, you might have to live like a student, you might have to go through a lot of down times. But if you're willing to fight through those via your effort and putting in, you know, using your brain power, then anything is possible and there's no reason it can't be you. Well, you just heard it right there. You can achieve the American dream only if you put in the effort, you put in that sweat equity, you are willing to put in the time and effort and deal with all of the downsides, deal with all of the failures. In fact, actually, the next clip I'm gonna show you is how Mark Cuban deals with failure. This is one of the most important clips you can watch in this entire video. I had a, there were six of us living in a three bedroom apartment. One day, well, the way we would do it back then, we'd all write checks to one person who would then deposit in their account and then write the landlord a check because that would buy us time with the float right back then so it would give us an extra couple days to get the money to deposit in our accounts a guy named dave o'brien doby one day just took those checks i have not seen him since and it's like what do you do you know and for whatever reason i mean i never got pissed i never got you know upset it was just like you know this is it right i just gotta go i just gotta do and i just gotta keep on grinding and that's always worked out for me. So even when things were the toughest, you know, my attitude has just been enjoy your life, smile, fight your way through it, and remember what you're good at. You know, one of the biggest core traits of successful people is how they deal with failure and how they deal with downturns in their life. And so when Mark mentioned that how, you know, the, the person stole a bunch of money from him, that was one of the, the key things. That's one of the early signs that he would have been a successful entrepreneur. I mean, that happened to him in his early 20s. And usually st when stuff like that happens in someone's early 20s, they either A, give up, or B, they focus on the future. They focus on what's next. They put in that hard work to be successful and you move on right away. Too many people get stuck in that downturn and they never dig themselves out of it. So the next thing on the docket here is how uh, Mark Cuban talks about business as a sport. Do you think there needs to be a healthy level of paranoia? Oh, absolutely. There needs to be. Oh yeah, I okay. mean, I always say, you know, for every one of my businesses, I, I said, what would I do to kick my own ass? You right? So whatever business you have, there's somebody trying to put you out of business. There's somebody trying to, to take a bite out of mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. And it's better for you to figure out how they're going to do it rather than they do it. Um, and so, yeah, that's being paranoid. And so you have to be paranoid. You have to anticipate other people's next move and moves. And you can't ever you know downplay the competition. Malcolm Gladwell talks about it in the book Outliers, 10,000 hours of exactly. practice. Exactly. 10,000 hours of practice to be world class at something. And, and business is no different. I always tell people business is... Is, is a sport and I, I've sat down with our players you know I've sat with Dirk and Vince Carter and others and said look you know you play basketball for 48 minutes you practice two three hours a day and have days off to rest in business there are no days off there are no minutes off business is a sport where it's always game time 24 by 7 by 365 by forever and there's always somebody trying to beat you and and the minute you let down your guard you're out of business you know, it's really important in business and in life to keep working hard and to keep innovating and adapting, to keep to keep putting yourself ahead of the curve so that no one behind you can catch you and, you know, kick your ass, as Mark Cuban would say. Actually, I heard on the Joe Rogan podcast recently about how he talks about these comedians. They've been doing the same material for 25 years. And guess what? They haven't been successful. They haven't broken through. It's because they've been doing the same material. They haven't put in that work over the last 20 years. They've just been doing the same old thing over and over and over again. They haven't been innovating or adapting. And all of the new young comedians have been, you know, coming up and, well, kicking their ass. They've been working harder than uh, than the old guys out there. So anyways, I think we're going to close this video out with uh, with just a nice quote here from, from Mark Cuban. And anyways, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You just have to try different things, and even, even if 99% of them fail, you only have to be right one time. You don't have to figure it all out in advance. You can be wrong, you can pick the wrong career, you can pick the wrong job, you can pick the wrong spouse, you can pick the wrong whatever, but you get it right one time, you're set.